Welcome to 10 Minute KQL. This is the first session in the KQL Beginner Series. Whether you're new to the world of IT or a tech pro looking to master the Custo query language, 10 Minute KQL is the place to level up your skills. This series is intended to take you from a level with minimal technical experience to writing your first queries using the KQL language. These short 10 minute sessions will teach you KQL, allow you to get hands-on practice in a lab environment, and provide some homework to practice after the session. At the end of this series, we'll have quizzes and challenges to see how well you know the material or to use as a refresher. In today's session, we'll introduce KQL, describe some use cases, and talk about what type of content you can expect from future sessions in the beginner series. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell. We'll try to upload a new video regularly, so please leave feedback in the comments section so we can make improvements to the channel as we go. So what is KQL? If you use Microsoft cloud-based products in your organization, chances are the resources and security tools collect some of their information in a data repo. This information can be performance metrics, it could be user actions like logging into a device, system health status updates, compliance metrics, security alerting, and so much more. Many popular applications use KQL on the back end to support their functionality, such as the Microsoft Defender suite of security tools. You have all of this big data from signals in your enterprise, and each enterprise selects what type of information is valuable to them. It has the option to store these in databases or other types of storage repos, depending on how it will be used. Oftentimes, individual databases are connected, which allows you to easily access all the data that you need and more easily interact with it. Admins, users, managers, and business leaders can make decisions based on this information, or they may need the information to automate actions as outputs. Each type of business persona can have different sets of questions that need to be answered, and the big data collected can help provide those answers. How often has this user logged in? Is my service connection broken? Has anyone remotely accessed my system? Is a malicious file communicating with a command and control system? How much has this service consumed in the last month? All of these questions and so many more can be answered with KQL. The Custo query language helps you write queries in a language optimized for ease of use, leveraging big data to answer questions on the systems in your environment. What kind of systems and applications use KQL? Azure Active Directory, Azure Monitor, the Microsoft Defender suite of security tools like Defender for Endpoint, Defender for Cloud Apps, Defender for Identity, and Defender for Office. These are just a few of the many data sources that can be queried using KQL. You can also pull in external data and query via KQL. KQL lets you make charts and graphs. Narrow down your search to just the information you need to find the needle in the haystack. And it's optimized for big data in the cloud, so it's efficient. KQL is a worm language, meaning write once, read many. So you don't have to worry about modifying or deleting the data in the database. You can simply query away without worrying about destroying important information as you're learning. In the beginner KQL series, the focus is on those new to IT, new to KQL, or for those with KQL experience that need to dust off the cobwebs and rebuild their foundation. We'll cover the basics of KQL syntax, how to structure your queries for optimization, and even go over database fundamentals. We'll explain the basic KQL operators like where, project, distinct, and count, which will help you answer many questions and will form a foundation for more advanced lessons. After you finish the beginner series, we'll have a follow-on intermediate and advanced series so you can continue to progress your skills as well as a beyond KQL series that uses KQL queries as an input to accomplish other output-related tasks using Microsoft tools. Finally, we'll have a query analysis series which will help you dissect queries line by line to understand them and get ideas about how other people compose complex queries to build your own. At the end of each session, we'll have a homework assignment where you can get hands-on practice 
either in your own production environment or in a free test environment. If you have a production environment at work, you can practice KQL there. It's always best to practice on the data sets you'll be using most often. If you don't have an environment to practice KQL in, Microsoft provides free access to data sets so you can practice KQL. In the next video in this series focusing on database fundamentals, we'll go over how to access these free data sets and configure settings that will help you out in the rest of the training sessions. To really learn KQL, or any language for that matter, you need to get hands-on practice. So the practical exercises will allow you to do just that. You can paste your homework results in the comment section and learn alongside others. There's more than one way to answer a question using KQL, so posting results in the comment section helps you to learn even more from those around you and helps you analyze what works and what doesn't. If you already know other languages like SQL, you'll find that KQL is much easier to learn. Although SQL is pronounced SQL, KQL is not pronounced KQL. You can call it whatever you want though, but you might get some strange looks if you do. The name Cousteau came from Jacques Cousteau, the underwater explorer, with a spelling change of course. If KQL is your first language, you pick the right one. Most find it very intuitive and easy to pick up. Most KQL interfaces have an IntelliSense feature that predicts what your next commands might be and gives you some ideas to explore. You can also look at the Microsoft Docs page for KQL. We'll put the link in the show notes, and there's a lot of great reference material there. After you get the hang of KQL, some people look to find a second language that makes sense. In some cases, exploring PowerShell can round out your skills nicely, depending on what your role is. Learning a language comes with many new and potentially complex concepts and terminology. The goal of the beginner series is to get you writing useful queries and understanding the basics of how languages work. We'll incorporate some of the technical language so you can become familiar with the terms, but we'll also include common references to frame the concepts and terms without overwhelming. There's no need to overcomplicate anything in the initial learning stages. If you want to quickly search and reference a specific KQL video, we'll name each video with the operators used and use the proper spelling, spacing, and capitalization. By doing this, if you search for a command, hopefully it will come up in the search results. All of the practice data sets we'll be using will not contain any sensitive user information, so feel free to copy and paste queries and results in the comment section. If you're using your production work environment to practice, Make sure you maintain good operational security if you decide to paste query results in the comment section to make sure sensitive user information or internal networking information is not accidentally exposed. To keep with the 10 minute theme, we'll try to keep the length of each video between nine and 11 minutes. If it makes sense to have longer or shorter sessions, let us know in the comment section so we can continue to improve. It's possible to leverage generative AI tools like ChatGPT to help learn languages and to produce query results. We'll discuss the pros and cons as well as analyze the accuracy of outputs. We'll also discuss how to have a back and forth discussion with generative AI tools that will increase the accuracy in your results. When using these open source tools, always keep operational security in mind to ensure internal corporate data is not exposed. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell. That's all for today's intro session. In the next video, we'll talk about database fundamentals to understand why we would even use a database in the first place. Then we'll start learning the KQL language and producing queries. We'll see you in the next session.